Today we begin our second season here at Sunderland and it's our first game back in the Championship. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Dan, welcome back to ReCFC and this is the FM21 Sleeping Giant series where we are Sunderland and as I just said, this is our second season, we managed to get promotion in the last episode, finally, we did make hard work of it didn't we, in promotion from League One, but we are out of the division now and we can get cracking in the championship and today we take on fellow promotion achievers, Ipswich Town, they came up via the playoffs, they finished sixth last year and won the playoffs to join us in promotion into the championship. So it's going to be, it's, it's a game we're at home to them today, but it's a game we should be looking to win if we do want to remain in this league this season. First of all, though, let's show you exactly what's been going on on the transfer front. We have to go back to last season on the transfer history for the first sign in, and that was Andre Green from Sheffield Wednesday, a fee potentially to be a million pounds. And uh, he's a very, I've changed the skin by the way. I don't know if I like it yet, but I have changed it. I don't like the fact it doesn't go straight to the attributes, but here we go. He's a very good player. Uh, people have recommended to me when I announced the save, they recommended Andre Green, and we, we scouted him for a season. I don't like just to get players just because people have said I like to scout them. Uh, because I feel like p players are different in each save. But this guy uh, impressed the scouts. He's impressed me with his attributes. And I think he's going to be a very good find indeed. Um, long shots are good. He's great from cutting in on the left-hand side. He's right-footed, so he'll uh, hopefully smash in a few goals coming in from the left-hand side. But he looks like a very good player indeed. And at a million pounds, potentially, he is a real snip. If we go now to this season, you can see there's a further seven or so sign-ins. First up was Jack Rolls from Tottenham on a free transfer. If we again go to the attributes, again, looks like a well-rounded player. He's only young. He's 22 years of age. He's a Cypriot international, and hopefully he will deliver. He's, he can play a box-to-box -box midfield role. We can also play an attacking midfield role, which we've played him a few times in pre-season. He's played it pretty well, so I'm excited about this guy from Spurs. We've got Dinal Sameu, I think it's pronounced, £1 million from Chelsea. He looks like a great youngster. And uh, again, attributes, getting used to this used to this skin again. I do just like the generic one usually, but uh, well, I'll, I'll try and stick with it for a little bit. And uh, yeah, he's a 19-year-old uh, Cameroonian. Uh, he's not an international. I thought he was a youth international, but he's not. No youth caps yet. Hopefully he's going to be a good find as well. Um, as well, the, the red is obviously poor on this new on this other skin. Free kick taking three, so he won't be on free kicks or crossing a ball with a four. But overall, his attributes for being a centre back are very good indeed. He can fill in at right back as well, which is great. Um, so if O9 gets injured or Mitch Clark, and we want to put Mitch Clark on the left, or for instance, he, he can fill in at right back, which is good. Very versatile defender, and um, his physical attributes are fantastic as well. Mental, very good as well. Very looking forward, very much looking forward to seeing how he develops for us. Another one was Christopher Rochia uh, from Marseille on a free transfer. He is a left back. He comes in um, not so much as a replacement for Hume. Voskins has gone back to his parent club. We kept Hume on. We've given him a new contract. He signed a four-year deal. Uh, this guy is to give uh, Rochia is going to give Hume a run for his money at left back. I'm probably going to potentially swap them over quite a lot this season. He likes to get forward, which is a real draw. His physical attributes, once again, fantastic. Crossing's great. Dribbling's great. I think he's going to be a good left wing back for us. Niall Ennis has come in from Plymouth for £2 million. He is a striker. Scored lots of goals last year. I think it told you there. Let me go back. Ah, this is doing my head in. I don't know where I'm going with his skin yet. 42 games last year for Plymouth. 22 goals. Very good player indeed. Scored lots of goals down in League One. Uh, I think he was the league top scorer as well. If we could head across to his attributes, he's finishing 13, dribbling 12, first touch is 11. He's a good, good player. He's not necessarily a deep-lying playmaker, uh, deep-lying forward because his passing's 10, which I suppose is okay, but we've got him to play as a pressing forward. He plays best as an advanced forward, but he's a good pressing forward 
as well. Physicals, acceleration is great. Stamina is great as well. So he'll keep working hard all game. I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do for us this season. Next up then is Liam Delap, another striker on loan from Manchester City. He's only had five appearances for Manchester City so far. He is a wonder kid at Manchester City and he comes in on a season long loan. 18 years of age, English, already valued at £16 million. Look at that for a pressing forward. He's a four and a half star rated pressing forward, four and a half star rated advanced forward and a four star complete forward. He is going to be a great player and hopefully he can do a good job for us this season. And who knows, if we stay up, if we get promoted, he might want to keep coming back on loan to us because Manchester City aren't going to use him in the near future, are they? Um, next up was Mitch Clark. We had him on loan last year. We know all about him. He played 31 games for us last season. I think he got a rating of about 7. Where is it? There we go. 6.92 rating last season average. Four assists and a goal. Player of the match once. He is a good player indeed we know all about him we got him for four hundred fifty thousand pounds from leicester city jack butland was also signed now the board weren't too impressed by the finances of this one one hundred thirty thousand pounds from crystal palace but he's an experienced keeper and i did want an experienced keeper at the club he joins from crystal palace uh, he didn't play any games for them last season 157 appearances for stoke but he's, he's on quite a bit of money which is what the board aren't too happy with twenty six thousand pounds per week but we're well under budget still, so it's not a bad signing, in my opinion. We also had him at Blackburn in last year's Sleeping Giants series, and he was very good for us indeed. Let's have a look at the outgoings then. We did sell Will Grigg £60,000 to Hibernian. We've got a couple of loanies, Almond and Curry, going out on loan to the youngsters. Dobson, Dunn, mcgeady has gone. He's one of the bigger losses, but I didn't want to sign him up again for another year because of his age mainly. And uh, one of the signings from last year, David Milinkovic, has gone to Ipswich Town, who faces today. So his debut is against his former side today at the Stadium of Light. £150,000 potentially raising to £200,000. Um, he didn't really set a light last year for us, so I was happy to let him go, especially with Andre Green coming in. So this is the start we are faced with then. It is Ipswich at home today, which you're going to see. Birmingham City away up next. Bournemouth at home will be a difficult one. They didn't manage to get themselves out of the Championship last year. Um, Harrogate in the Cup, Reading away from home and Luton. So they are our first five league games. Winnable games there, but it's going to be a tough old season here. Club Vision, then, this is what they want us to do this season. Fight bravely against relegation. So if we just finish one place above the bottom three, happy days. I want to be pushing towards mid-table, but it might be a bit ambitious at this stage. But I think we've recruited really well so far. We're also looking at signing Dewsbury Hall from Leicester on loan. He's one uh, player we do want to bring in, and another midfielder as well, in Billy Gilmore, who is available for loan from Chelsea. But we're trying to get that deal over the line. He did. Both of them did reject it. We've gone in with another offer. Hopefully, um, the loan deals will happen the clubs accepted it but the players just didn't want to come that happened with Liam Delap, but it was because he was in the, on the verge of signing a new contract with Man City so he went back later and then he signed on loan so hopefully Gilmore and Dewsbury Hall it's a similar situation but of course we'll give you keep you updated in the next episode on that one so fight bravely against relegation finish uh, reach the fourth round of the FA Cup and the third round of the Carabao Cup as well we've got Harrogate in the cup hopefully we can get through uh, a couple of rounds just to tick one of the club's objectives off let's get straight into the game then shall we and this is the side we have selected for the first championship game against Ipswich Town at home it's a game that we need to win really uh, against one of the fellow I, I guess relegation contenders this year with us we're both kind of favorites to go down one of the favorites I think we're if you look at the season preview we're like 20th favourites for the title which puts us just above the relegation zone but here it goes it is Jack Butland in goal Clark at left back Willis right to no nine keeps his place at right back Clark switching to the left uh, Scowan and Power in midfield Andre Green Maguire Gooch and Liam Delap up top so four new signings in there let's see how they get on then so hopefully a winning start we things we we, we started really well last year didn't we with Sunderland but this Towards the end of the season, we did kind of get a bit inconsistent. We need a good start for sure. We're going to say to the boys, go out and avenge the defeat to Ipswich last season. And we are underway here at the Stadium of Light. I don't like, I haven't sorted out all these panels yet. So I'm not too sure what's going on there. But Scowan to Power. Scowan back to Power now. Um, Power, and I was debating about a midfielder. Apparently Power and Scowan are decent, according to our scouts, are decent for a uh, decent rating for 
championship side. So two good midfielders there. Hopefully we can bring in Dewsbury Hall or Gilmore as well to really stiffen up that midfield. But that is a wonderful start to his Sunderland career for Andre Green. and played one out wide. Clark getting an assist as well on his full, well, his second debut for the club. This time his full debut, if that makes sense, being a permanent member. But Andre Green puts Sunderland ahead here at the Stadium of Light and that is wonderful stuff. Maguire on the ball, plays it out wide to Mitch Clark. Willis on the ball now, coming forward into Scow and playing, playing the ball nicely between the lines. Out wide to 09 who has lots of space. Maguire back to 09, Scow and picks it up as well. Real patient build up from us today. Delap to Green, Clark, Maguire. Just get the ball in the box and score, boys. And Delap is there and he gets his second goal. Well, Sunderland's second goal and Delap's first goal for us. 2-0 in three minutes. What an unbelievable start this is. I didn't envisage this one bit. Green, Clark, it's really built, uh, patient build up. And that was a killer ball. It's unlucky for Wolfenden and then. He did, uh, obviously the ball was going through to Andre Green, but then he, he tried to divert it out for a corner and Delap was there to put it out or into the back of the net rather eight minutes gone Sunderland two Ipswich nil can we make it three from here this would be absolutely fantastic Downs clears it away Clark picks up the ball Scowan on the ball now coming forward to Gooch Delap Gooch into Maguire is it going to be three? Oh my word what a start this is I mean if Ipswich are losing 3-0 to us on the first game of the season they haven't got a cat in hell's chance of staying up ten minutes on the clock Sunderland three Ipswich Town nil I did not imagine this would happen. It's going to be one of these games, though. It's going to be three or four nil at half time, and then you're going to see absolutely nothing in the second half. Or we are going to completely capitulate and, uh, you know, throw this lead away. That's a bit better. Expand them panels out a little bit more. Jack Butland on the ball now, out to Luke 09. 17 minutes on the clock now. Lyndon Gooch has picked up a little knock here, which we need to keep an eye on. Gooch coming forward, 09 on the ball now. Plays a lovely ball into Delap. Can Delap score again? And oh, I thought Liam Delap had scored once again for his second goal of the game, but it is still 3 0 to the Black Hats. Right, Milinkovic clears it away. Of course, it's an unhappy return to the stadium of light. He's only been gone a couple of weeks, but he's already on the end of a bit of a hammering at the minute. Good save from Jack Butland, his first bit of action. First thing he's been called upon in this game, and he is um, concentrating very well, considering all the action has been up the other end. And uh, which, which he needs to prove himself on his debut today because Burge is a little bit annoyed he's not playing. And he's been dropped because he had a good season for us last year. But I said I wanted to improve the goalkeeper situation last year. I felt it was pushing it if I didn't do it in for this season in a much better league. Still 3-0, half an hour on the clock. We're absolutely dominating 1.23 XG possession-wise, 65%. We, we've got a hell of a lot of, of the ball. Crystal Palace are down in... I, f I forgot to go through who have been relegated. Palace, as you can see, have been relegated. Fulham as well. And it's half-time. I will go through and show you the rest shortly. But that was brilliant. We're going to say to the boys, don't get complacent out there. I think it might be wise to bring off Lyndon Gooch if he's still struggling, which he is. We might put... Can Wern play out there? He's a youngster. We're going to put him out there. I think he's better on the left-hand side. However... Green is having an absolute blinder out on the left, so we don't want to disrupt his performance. Uh, who else came... Every time I go to look to see who else came down, just to show you what's been happening. Um, bit of teams dropping out of the Premier League. We, we could jump straight into a highlight. Green on the ball now does well. Battled hard, and oh my word! And that was the most fortunate goal I think Max Power will ever score. He knew absolutely nothing about that. And uh, yeah, Green wins the ball back here. Great battling from Andre Green. Let's have a look here. Yeah, he does really well. Puts the ball across. It's cleared and it hits power. Chambers clears it. Hits power in the back, I think, on the back side. And it's gone in, in off his bum into the back of the net. 4-0 to the Black Hats. This is crazy stuff. We're at the hour mark. We are going to look at making another change. Um, I might give Liam Delaps only scored one. We'll take him off. Bring Ennis on. Hopefully he can get on the score sheet today. A leaky Ipswich defence. And hopefully he can get himself a goal as well. Uh, we've already made a change prior to this, so we won't make another one. I was going to bring the new left back on as well to give him a little run out, but we'll do that for about 15 minutes or so left. And it is uh, 70th minute. Sunderland 4, Ipswich Town nil. We are going to bring on... Let, let's see what happens in this highlight first. Uh, Maguire on the ball now. Let's put Ennis... Oh, I thought he was going to put Ennis in over the top there. We didn't. Wern coming forward now. He's challenged. Power picks up the ball. Out wide to Mitch Clark. Green. Green turns nicely. Uh, just he's quite greedy isn't he green he likes running with the ball power uh, pings one out wide here to Mitch Clark who will cut this back on his right foot I'm sure power Clark 
power. They're just playing between themselves. Uh, power back to Clark again. Is he going to put it on his right? He does. Plays it in looking for one. And Ennis is there. This is what we bought him on for. A leaky Ipswich defence. And uh, he's come on and scored on his debut as well. So that's two of our strikers that we've signed have both got on the score sheet today, which is a wonderful start for the pair of them. Power and Clark, so there's about 30 passes between them. They're just playing football on their own. Wern probably should have scored there, but the defender got there ahead of him. That was just experience. He's not pro uh, proactive enough. And Ennis is there to tuck it home. And we are going to make that change. Bring on our new left-back, Rochia, for Mitch Clark, who did just get that assist. Well... Does it go down as assist? I'm not too sure. It was kind of blocked at the other by, by the defender before it made its way to Ennis, wasn't it? 87th minute then. Sunderland 5, Ipswich 0. This has been terrific. I did not think this would happen at all. And there's confirmation. Green, Delap, Maguire, Power. Who else got on there? Niall Ennis as well. Lovely stuff indeed. What a performance that is. And we're going to tell them that was a great result and a great performance and if we have a look at the league table then I mean end the season now for one game in top of the league automatic promotion championship title I'll take that all day long rock bottom already Ipswich after that what's a performance that was from the boys let's have a look when we'll bring you back then so it is it always does this go back to the schedule there we go we see the months does anyone else get that bug I always get that bug where it doesn't show you the breakdown of the months just stacks it all together we'll come back then in about six seven games time I think it's fair to say maybe we'll come back for Rotherham I think they're going to be down there um, in amongst the relegation zone and that's kind of where we've, we've been pitched fight against relegation I think Rotherham will be a good one and we'll be coming towards the end of the transfer window for that as well so guys if you did enjoy that first episode please leave a like on there for me what a performance that was 5-0 first game of the season hopefully that bodes well for the rest of the season thank you for watching if you haven't subscribed yet please hit the like uh, please hit the subscribe button and make sure you're here for the episode on monday episode two against rotherham thanks very much for watching Bye bye